Hi, I'm David Kelly, President and CEO of Chicana Copper. Chicana Copper is a company that's made a very important discovery in Peru. It's a high-grade copper, gold, silver uh, discovery in the Ancash province. It's in an active mining district. We've advanced that project to the point that we now can start analyzing and evaluating the economic potential of the discovery. When you overlay that with the exceptional exploration upside potential we have on the project, we think this is an outstanding time to invest in Chicana Copper. If you look at our, our chart, you see that we are heavily discounted from where we were this year, even last year, and, and more, more significantly back in, in 2020. Right, but that'll be for a reason. Okay, in fact, you've answered, you actually asked, answered a question sent in, which was quite simply and quite, quite, quite a pure question, which is how do we get back to 70 cents, right? So you need to answer that because you were in 2020, you know, hit that 70 cent range um, and it's been downhill all the way since. But does that mean that you're a worse company today than you were then? Well, absolutely not, Matthew. You know, we've learned so much in getting that resource out. We've been pushing hard on this project. Since we made the discovery in 2017, we've drilled 60,000 meters. And every meter, you're learning something about the asset that you're exploring. You never have all the answers when you start, but you develop a much a more acute uh, knowledge of, of what you have as you continue to advance it. So we're in a much better position now to know what we have, to know what that potential could be in the future. And that's why we're really bullish on moving ahead with this resource, um, get, gaining traction towards getting that into production, but also uh, advancing our exploration asset to the southern part of the, of the tenements where we have really exceptional exploration upside potential. Right. Okay. So let's, let's, we, we got to work out what's going on here. Right? I, I, I'd like to understand what's, what's going on here. You've, you've done a lot of drilling. You know a lot more uh, about what your discovery and, and, and what you're, what you're dealing with here. And you've got some money to make some decisions with. I, you got to work out how you allocate that capital. So we talked in the past about the Peru discount. Is that, is that still something that you're, you know, banging your head, head against the wall with in terms of conversations with investors? Well, you, it's, it's hard to answer it. Um, you know, with 100% certainty. But, you know, from my view, there's really three main things that are that are dominating what's happening in the mining seg segment. And it's not just Chicana stock, it's it's most of our peers. Uh, you know, there, there's an overall bear market that's happening and, you know, fear of a crash. A lot of people have cashed out of, of the market. Um, they're concerned about, um, you know, the economy. And so there's been a lot of money, tremendous amount of money pulled out of the market. On top of that, we have soft commodity prices, not just copper, but also gold and silver. Many people are perplexed why gold is still where it is, why it hasn't taken off, why is the dollar so strong. Uh, you know, something's going to have to give there. We know that. On the copper side, we know the LME stocks are down. They're now measured in weeks instead of months. Uh, on top of the the normal demand for copper, you've got the cl the, the clean energy revolution, which is going to uh, take copper to a, a point where we've never seen before, and we know that that's coming. So there's a lot of drivers uh, behind uh, you know being optimistic for the future. But right now, you look at the commodity prices, and they've they've softened. The third really, uh, you know, point to make about uh, the current state is is what's happening in Peru, and the fact that we have a an administration there that's been dysfunctional. They haven't accomplished anything. Uh, the outlook for them to do anything good is not uh, is not great. But also on the flip side to that, we know that they uh, it's unlikely that they're going to do anything really damaging to the mining industry. They're still number two in the world in terms of global copper production or number one in Latin America for gold production. I don't expect that to change. In fact, if you look at what the big companies are doing, like Newmont, they've got a $2 billion uh, capital expansion project for their deep sulfides at Yanacocha. Many other mega projects are, are in line to be uh, developed or advanced uh, in, in, in the near future. So uh, people are continuing. The people that know Peru are not scared about what's happening there. It did affect the retail market, no, no question about that. So when you put all three of those, uh, those factors together, you can somewhat understand where we're at now, why companies are so heavily discounted. Right, but what do you do about it? I, I hear that, and, and you're right, it applies to everyone across the board. But what do, you, what do you do about it for your company? Well, you know, for us, we're, we're fortunate that we do have a resource. We got that resource out this year. It's a high-grade resource. 
you know, a lot of companies have resources that are that are low grade and they're going to struggle to to develop those uh, resources. The economics are not going to look great, especially when your cost structure is is high. And, you know, we all like to see commodity prices increase. But usually what happens when you have increasing commodity prices is you also have in, increasing cost structure and that affects your bottom line. So the, the best way to combat that is to have grade and, and we do have high grade. You know, we, we've got in, in our resource, we've got 190,000 ounces of, of gold, 11.7 million ounces of silver and 130 million pounds of copper. That's just the initial resource. That's just based on a very small fraction of, of the overall, uh, you know, breccia pipe inventory that we have on the project. So we know that that's going to grow. But we see the important thing is that our copper grades at around 1% and about 50% of the value sits in precious metals and the other 50% sits in, in copper. So, you know, what, what are we going to do about it? Well, first of all, we have a great asset and we're going to maximize the potential that that asset can bring to our shareholders by pushing that resource towards production while also, you know, being aggressive on the exploration side because the exploration uh, potential of this project is exceptional. I, I can think of very few other junior companies out there that have a project at the stage that we're at that has the kind of exploration potential that we have. Right. And, and so remind me of your money situation at the moment. How much have you got? Yeah, we're at about 3.4 million Canadian. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that, that gets you to do what? What, what would the sort of next announcement be? Well, um, what we're working on now, I mean, we're doing internal evaluations of the resource and what the economic potential of that can be. We're advancing the uh, understanding of the deposit with uh, geometallurgical study. That's a predecessor to doing more definitive metallurgical work. And, you know, that's really key. Um, those, those are input parameters to the engineering studies, the uh, preliminary economic analysis and pre-feasibility type of studies. So we're advancing our knowledge down that pathway, staying ahead of, uh, of the curve with uh, gaining the information that we're going to need to make uh, the types of decisions about how this operation would be put into production, what kind of processing facilities would be needed. We're investigating the small mining uh, producer license for Peru. It's an, exp ex is an expedited way of getting into production. It's limited production, 350 tons per day. But when you consider the fact that we've got uh, exceptional zones within these breccia pipes that are very high grade, you know, we had an intercept in 2021 that was 12 meters of 27% copper and 967 grams silver. That was in a massive sulfide. So we have these really uh, very, very uh, high grade zones within these breccia pipes. And we know that, you know, production on those types of things could, uh, you know, could bring very significant capital returns. So those are the types of things that we're looking at. And then we're also advancing the, um, you know, the exploration access to the south side. We've talked about the mega gold anomaly, which we feel has multi-million ounce uh, gold potential right at surface. And we're a copper company, right? But we keep talking about gold. That's one of the really interesting aspects about this discovery is it, it's a copper, gold, silver discovery. And when it's in production, it's going to produce very significant amounts of all three metals. Right. But, but, uh, we hear a lot of companies now talking the game of, well, we can get into kind of small scale production because it'll get some revenue through. It's anti-dilutory in, in, in nature. And we think we can get funding for it because the kind of CapEx component is, is not too expensive, and, we've, and people also talk about, you know, alternative financing for doing such things, right? Um, how do you decide how much effort you put into that message? Because it's a very risk off market environment conversation to have, to say to people, it's okay, we're, we're, we're thinking outside the box. But then when the market turns, it, it doesn't look quite as good a conversation to be having. So how, how do you move that forward? And, you know, what's the reality of it actually happening and not, not just being a conversation? Well, you know, I, I think, um, you know, from our view, the, the, the resource is something that's going to be a mine. And the lead times uh, in Peru for permitting, um, you know, they can be exceptional. That's one of the reasons we're interested in the small mining uh, license is because the, the permit times are much faster than they are in the long lead times. But we also know that, you know, you can grow that production over time. So you can start small with the idea that you'll build 
uh, the infrastructure that you need to get into production. You get into production, you get the revenue going, and then you expand that over time. It's it also demonstrates uh, the uh, the positive aspects that we have on this project and the fact that we're you know mining uh, high grade mineralization that starts at surface. We're in an active mining district. We have very supportive communities in the area because mining has been part of the of the history and culture of this part of Peru for a very long time. So we want to push forward with the positive aspects because we think that helps us expand production in the future. But at the same time, we're we're not giving up on exploration. In fact, you know, we're we're exceptionally aggressive on the exploration front and we uh, you know, we feel that this resource that we have here and now is a very small example of what this project could become in the future. Right. OK, so you're going to advance on all, on all fronts. Early production is it uh, uh, is a distinct possibility. It's not just a conversation, um, but the exploration is, you think, valuable. I mean, is that that's where you kind of got with that first discovery you made back in 2020. That's kind of where you saw that big, big bump. Do you think of oh, clearly in this market? I'm not sure companies are getting the same sorts of same sort of rewards, but you feel that's the the, the best use of capital is to go hunting for the next discovery. Well, you're right about that. I mean, there is a uh, a trend in the industry uh, right now, especially, and, and it comes back to the, the the kind of the more macro factors that we talked about and what's going on in the overall market. Uh, there's not a lot of confidence in in the markets right now, and so companies have put out really good, strong, excellent you know drill results or expansions of resources, and they're not getting rewarded for that. I mean, I can give you an example that at the beginning of the year. The average uh, value of a gold in the ground per ounce uh, was around thirty-five to forty dollars for the junior segment of the of the mining industry. Right now, our stock and many others like us, uh, you know, we're valued at about fifteen to twenty dollars per ounce in the ground. So that's a huge discount to uh, to what you know a normal market environment would be like. I mean, you you, you talk about leverage. You know, even the big producers, you know, you look at Newmont and you look at Barrick, uh, you look at Goldfields, those companies are half of what they were at the start of the year. You know, so if they can just reachieve where they were at the beginning of the year, you're going to double your money. But if you look at the junior segment, you know, our our company and our peers are, you know, four and five times below where we were just a year ago. And if you go back two years, if you go back three years, I mean, that's where the tin baggers sit, right? And when I talk to people that have made a, you know exceptional wealth in this industry, you always hear the stories about, well, yeah, I was investing heavily during the global financial crisis. You know, I was investing heavily during the, the bear market. And, 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 you know, they're long-term investors. They see the value of what we've got. You can look at our, uh, uh, the cost of uh, the value of, of the gold that we have in the ground and measure it and compare it against other companies. And you can see how heavily discounted we are. Um, it, it's an exceptional time to go in and invest and accumulate shares. You know, we're trading at nine cents uh, a share today. Uh, that's, you know, that's a market cap of about 15 million Canadian with 620,000 ounces of gold equivalent in the ground in an active mining district. And it's high grade. So, you know, there, there's a lot of things that don't make sense in the industry right now. But what does make sense to me is investing in companies like Chicana that have solid assets in great jurisdictions with very experienced management teams that have the capability of maximizing the, the value of these assets for its shareholders.